Hallelujah. What a beautiful morning that the Lord has given us. What a blessed new day that we have been blessed with to again hear from each other. We are God free, your pastor, bringing his greetings and regards to your beloved families. We I thank the Lord that you are still alive and seeking him and waiting upon his power to come and empower you. Hallelujah. Today, I want to begin by reminding you that of the 21 extra days of the lockdown, we are remaining with about 10 days. And these 10 days, I want you to dedicate them to being in the presence of God, in a mode of waiting and anticipating the power from above to visit you right there where you are. Tell your neighbor, in these 10 days, I'm going to be visited with the dynamis power from above and my family, my ministry, my business, my life shall never remain the same. Hamina. So let us begin by reading from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 21, downwards up to about 28. Our theme remains waiting upon the Holy Spirit. Let's read. I hope you have arrived there. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, and they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Mark that. He taught them as one having authority. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For this, with the authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region about, around Galilee. Father, we thank you for this word. Breathe on it life and let it bless our hearts in Jesus' name. As I was said, our theme is waiting upon the Holy Spirit. From the portion of scripture we've just read, we realize that there are two major aspects of Jesus' ministry. Ask your neighbor, have you known those two aspects? What is one of them and what is the second one? I want to bring it to you know, notice that the two aspects, one of them is he taught with the authority. The second one is his teaching was followed with demonstration of power. Hallelujah. He taught with the authority. We see it in verse 22. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. That is where we see that Jesus' ministry had an aspect of teaching with authority. Hallelujah. Then, the second aspect, he demonstrated God's power, God's divine power. We see it in verse 27. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? With authority, he commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. So, he demonstrated God's power by commanding the unclean spirits and they obeyed him. Tell your friend power. And tell your friend again authority. Jesus' ministry had those two aspects. Teaching with authority and 
demonstrating God is power. And that is exactly what the Lord wants to do in your life in such a season as this. Where Jesus is not is today, he expects you to teach with authority. He expects us to demonstrate God's power because it is about dislodging the enemy from the people's lives, from their territories, from their homes. So we need that power. Tell your neighbor you need that power. You need to teach with authority. And we need to teach followed by demonstration of God's divine power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, having known that these two aspects were manifested in Jesus' ministry, we want to ask ourselves, what was the secret of Jesus teaching with authority and demonstrating the divine power? What was his secret? In Psalms 27 verse 14, if we can read there, Psalms 27 verse 14, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That is Psalms 27 verse 14. When you look at it keenly, you realize that in verse 14 of Psalms 27, there is the word wait being repeated, meaning the Spirit of God is putting an emphasis on waiting, a principle of waiting. So the secret of Jesus teaching with authority and demonstration of divine power is in the principle of waiting. So what is waiting upon the Holy Spirit? Waiting upon the Holy Spirit, according to Psalms 27 verse 14, is the same as waiting upon God. Waiting upon the Holy Spirit is the same as waiting upon God. Why? In the book of First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, Don't you know that you are the temples of God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. So that is Psalms, not Psalms, First Corinthians 3, 16. So why we wait upon the Holy Spirit is for the Holy Spirit to come and feel us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is interchanging. We are the temples of God where the Holy Spirit of God dwells. So if the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us, and we are temples of God, the Holy Spirit is the same as God. So, waiting upon the Holy Spirit is the same as waiting upon God to come and dwell in us in a glorious way. So, as we continue learning about waiting upon the Holy Spirit, you are inviting God himself to dwell in you and his glory to fill his temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit fill you with the glory of God as you continue waiting in desperation, in desperation and in hunger. Amina, umemu tuku wakuju ze chitiwa, choku bela ukwa katonda. Ngabu umurindira, ninyonta, ninjala. So, waiting upon the Holy Spirit also means to assign quality time that is the undistracted time to devote our minds and lives to focus on, on God, the Holy Spirit. You assign quality time that is not distracted to devote your mind and lives to focus on God, the Holy Spirit. But with anticipation that he will come and breathe afresh on you and give you power. Praise the Lord. We want to see whether it is easy to wait upon the Lord. I want to tell you, my, my dear brethren, the key to God's power is in waiting. However, it is not easy. And that's why many of us, we are failing Jesus. We are not teaching with authority and we are not demonstrating his power because we are so much in a hurry, we are so impatient and waiting is not easy. So we fail to draw his presence and power. So the 
sub theme that I'm talking about is that waiting upon the Lord has a price. Tell your neighbor, waiting upon the Lord has a price. As we learn from the book of Acts chapter 3. No, 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 no. It's not chapter 3. It's chapter 1. Verse 4 and verse 5. When Jesus commanded his apostles and disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, they did not first run back home. They did not this time first run back to fishing. They instead immediately went back to the upper room and they gathered themselves in the upper room and waited. So they forego, they far, they far went what we call leisure, what they we call comfort of their families, and they spent that time which is not distracted focusing on God the Holy Spirit. Some of us, it is time to do it with leisure, to suspend some of the business we are doing and concentrate on God the Holy Spirit. Praise Jesus. Mukama yeva ziwe tueta agechu o kumuli indirida. But instead some of us, we are busy watching television, listening to every news, Wasting time on WhatsApp, doing all whatever is in our pleasure. Yet, God expects us to wait upon Him and commune with Him in such a season. 